Uh, like I said, you know, we have both database and semi-analytical spectral matching techniques, and you can retrieve chlorophylls and bathymetry and bottom classification. And, and those things have worked pretty well. The, what you've just seen here is now kind of what the Navy does for operational image analysis in shallow waters. And, uh, you know, a little off the record statement here, you know, the U.S. just had this drone shot down flying over Iranian waters. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it wasn't getting imagery to run through the crystal software. That's pure speculation and you didn't hear it from me. Okay, um, the catch though is bad atmospheric correction, you get bad retrievals. There's no getting around it. And the atmospheric correction is especially hard for shallow waters or, or very turbid waters where you can't make black pixel approximations. You may have absorbing aerosols because you're just downwind from the land. And so these other techniques often require that you make other measurements like the atmospheric properties or you have some ground truth data that you can use to do the atmospheric correction. And that's hard to get uh, on a routine basis. You would like to be able to just do everything automatically, but it's really hard to do. So anyway, um, the, uh, you know, that's kind of the story. The, the techniques are proven, they work well. Operationally, the real problem is atmospheric correction in these really shallow uh, waters. So that's it for me. Uh, if you go, when you go to Kathmandu to do your trek in Nepal, you'll run into a lot of these guys. He's a sadhu and he's working on moksha, which is retrieving, releasing himself from the endless cycle of life, death, reincarnation, live another crappy life, die, get reincarnated, live another crappy life. So if you're really into it, at the end of your current life, you renounce all family, you get rid of all material possessions, and you just basically become a beggar and walk around and, uh, you know, try to release yourself from all these material things that are messing up with your karma and your, uh, your uh, you know, getting, with, with luck, he will not be reincarnated. He'll go off to Nirvana and hang out there. So anyway, there's a lot of these guys, some of them are running around completely buck naked. They do not like even own a pair of underwear and they just kind of wander around on the street and they beg and you know, you give them like five rupees and take their picture, they're super happy. So it's a colorful place, so you definitely need to go there. Fortunately, I saw it before the earthquake destroyed a lot of the temples that I looked at and they're just not there anymore. But that's it. So. Uh, I'm not into Farsi and Arabic so, or Hebrew. I don't know how those are pronounced. I'm assuming Lydia maybe speaks some uh, Swahili. I don't know. Is that bad Swahili or you don't know either? <laughs> Whatever mistakes are here can be blamed on the Google Translator neural network. So that's it for me. Uh, this is supposedly my last lecture. And uh, then I guess we can take a break for whatever you want, Colin, 20 minutes or something, and then we'll do the, the ethics thing. So, okay.